Crab cakes are an American classic, and today we're making them two ways, one with jumbo lump crab meat and the other with a vegetarian twist. We're gonna serve them with a remoulade sauce and a crispy tangy coleslaw. And for dessert, a lemon zest cake with a vanilla lavender glaze. And the cocktail of the day, a lavender lemon drop. Jen, and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making crab cakes, which are a popular favorite for families or for entertaining. Unfortunately, they're usually not considered a healthy favorite. So today, our challenge, a healthier crab cake. Now to get started, I'm gonna use half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Now these are Japanese breadcrumbs, and they also happen to be vegan, which means they contain no animal products whatsoever. To that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of soy milk, now you can use regular low fat milk if you prefer. Now traditionally you would add an egg as a binding agent to crab cakes, but if you have high cholesterol or you're looking to lower your fat intake, then this is gonna be a fabulous product for you. It's actually an egg replacer. And what it is, it's a vegetarian product and it's made up of either a tapioca starch or a potato starch. And when added to warm water, it forms a binding agent that will do just what an egg does in a traditional recipe. Okay, we're gonna combine this. Okay, in a separate dish now, we're gonna add two tablespoons of vegetarian mayonnaise, but you can use a low-fat version if you like, a tablespoon of prepared horseradish, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. We're gonna mix that up. Okay, to that we're gonna add our spices. We're gonna start with about half a tablespoon of paprika, quarter tablespoon of prepared mustard. This is a Creole seasoning and it's fabulous. But if you can't find it in your local grocer, we've got a great recipe online at jensgiltlessgourmet.com. And about a quarter teaspoon each salt and pepper. We'll just stir that up. Okay, to that, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of baking soda. Now you're gonna notice that as we combine that, it really starts to react with the other ingredients. Okay, we're gonna add this to our breadcrumb mixture. Okay, to that, we're gonna add our fresh herbs and spices. We're gonna add two tablespoons of parsley, two tablespoons of finely chopped onion, and two tablespoons of minced celery and give it a quick stir. Here's where we get to add our crab. Now crab is usually considered a high cholesterol food. And one of the reasons is you eat it alongside butter. The other reason is that some crab is actually higher in cholesterol. For example, blue crab is actually about 28 milligrams per ounce. However, Alaskan king crab, which we have here, is only 15 milligrams per ounce, which is very comparable to chicken, which is only 20 milligrams. I'm gonna give this a quick mix. Now since these recipes are very similar, I've already started the vegan one. I have our breadcrumb mixture, I have our mayo mixture, and all of our spices have already been added. Now to this, I'm gonna add our first vegetarian ingredient, tofu. Now if you have never worked with tofu before, or you've never tasted it, do not be afraid. <laughs> tofu simply means bean curd, and tofu is made from soy milk in a very similar way that cheese is made from regular milk. So there it is, demystified. I'm simply going to take about half a pound of this and crumble it right into our crab cake mixture. Now I have a second really fun vegetarian product. It's actually a vegetarian shrimp. Now there's no actual shrimp in this. What it is is vegetable proteins and starches that have been modified to kind of replicate what a shrimp looks and tastes like. I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons of this to our vegetarian crab cake. Okay, now I'm gonna mix this up. Now for our simple little cooking technique. Most crab cake recipes call for you to pan fry them in oil or butter. And the minute you do that, 
The oil and the butter just absorbs into that crab cake and that's going to add about 10 to 17 grams of fat per crab cake. Now that's a lot of fat if you're trying to watch your calories and cholesterol. So today what we're going to do, and it's actually what a lot of restaurants do, is bake them instead. They're still going to have that great crispy texture, you're just not going to have all the fat involved. So I'm going to grab some more panko breadcrumbs. And now here's the fun messy part. You gotta just go ahead and dig right in. Okay, now we're gonna put these in an oven at about 360 degrees for 30 minutes or so until they're nice and golden brown. I'm gonna get cleaned up. And when we come back, we have a wonderful remoulade sauce, a crispy tangy coleslaw, and a beautiful low-fat lemon essence cake. Now, a remoulade is French in origin, and it's kind of the equivalent to an English tartar sauce. So let's say it's a fancy tartar sauce. Okay, we're gonna start in our food processor here with about a cup and a half of low-fat mayonnaise. You can also use vegan mayonnaise. And I can't stress enough the importance of choosing a lower fat mayonnaise product because whole mayonnaise has so many calories and so much cholesterol from fat and oil and eggs. Now we're gonna add a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of Louisiana style hot sauce. Now depending on how spicy you like your remoulade, you can use a little more, a little less of this. Two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. A tablespoon of organic cane sugar, a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of black pepper, one nice minced garlic clove, and don't worry, that, that flavor combines really nicely in here. A tablespoon of chopped capers, very important. Don't leave out the capers. Now we have about two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, two tablespoons of minced celery, and about four beautifully chopped scallions. I found these at a farmer's market, a great place to find fresh organic produce. We're gonna put the top on this, and we're just gonna pulse it until combined. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, that's really nice. And that little bit of hot sauce in there really gives it a nice kick. Now for plating purposes, we're gonna put it in a squeeze bottle. Now these are great, they're cheap, you can pick them up anywhere, and when it comes time to plating your food, they're really handy. Okay, just top that off there. Set that in the sink. This is gonna be great with our crab cakes. Now we're gonna do our coleslaw. We're gonna start with a cup of low-fat mayonnaise or soy mayonnaise, whichever you prefer. Three quarters of a cup of organic low-fat yogurt. We're gonna take a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons of horseradish. About a quarter teaspoon of celery seeds. About half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay, and we're just gonna stir this together. Now we're gonna add it to our cabbage. So by using low-fat mayonnaise, or soy mayonnaise, and low-fat yogurt, we're taking out a lot of those fat calories, but we're really keeping all of the flavor. I'm gonna add about a cup of bell pepper. Now I have red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, orange bell pepper. You can really use whatever you like, but I notice that these colors tend to be really nice and sweet, and they'll offset the spiciness of that horseradish and they'll add some beautiful color as well. Great. Now you could eat this right now, but coleslaw is really meant to be made a day ahead of time. That way the cabbage has time to break down and all those spices can combine. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the refrigerator and pull out the one I made yesterday. I can't wait to give this a taste. Mmm. That is so good. You can't tell it's a low-fat dressing, and that horseradish gives it such a nice kick. Let's take a look at those crab cakes. Oh, wow. 
These look fabulous. Perfectly done, nice and golden. These crab cakes are gonna be fabulous. I'm gonna put two per plate. That's a nice portion size. You know, one of the really nice things about plating your food is it's easier to control your portion size that way. Too often, if you serve family style, you make too much food to begin with, and then it all sits on the table, and it all gets eaten. Really easy way to overeat. I have some lovely garnish. A little bit of fresh parsley there. I have some of those red and yellow and orange bell peppers. Now here's where the squeeze bottle comes in handy. And as long as you're taking the time to make beautiful food, you might as well take the time to serve it beautifully. It's beautiful, but I've gotta try it. <laughs> Mmm, those are so good. With the remoulade and the coleslaw, I can't wait for you to taste these. And coming up next, we still have our lemon essence cake and our cocktail of the day. Now we're gonna make a beautiful citrusy lemon cake. And the twist on this one, we're using no eggs and no milk. So it's gonna be very low in cholesterol and a lot lower in fat. And it's still gonna taste really, really good. So we're gonna start with half a cup of soy non-hydrogenated margarine. Now it doesn't specifically need to be a soy margarine, however when you're selecting a margarine, please stick with non-hydrogenated oils. There's a big difference and basically the non-hydrogenated ones are much better. To that we're gonna add a cup and a third of pure organic cane sugar. Now we're just gonna mix that up a little bit with the beaters before we turn them on. So we're basically just mixing those until combined and fluffy. Now we're gonna take three cups of organic unbleached flour. To that we're gonna add a tablespoon of baking powder. and we're gonna add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna give that a quick stir just to combine those before we sift them. We've basically made two eggs out of an egg replacer type product. That's gonna act as our binding agent. Let's mix that up quickly. Okay, now to this, we're gonna slowly sift in our flour mixture and we're gonna add soy milk. We have two cups of soy milk. And once again, if all you have is low fat milk on hand and you prefer that, go right ahead. And we're gonna sift in about half of the flour mixture. This just makes your cake lighter. And about half of the soy milk. Okay, now we're gonna add the second half of our flour mixture. Okay, once that's basically combined, we're gonna beat it on high for about two minutes until it's nice and glossy. Okay, that should be good. Now to add our flavorings. We're gonna add two teaspoons of lemon essence. Now you could add lemon juice, but lemon juice sometimes reacts with, um, with baking recipes and the texture can be affected, so I like to stick with an essence. Teaspoon of vanilla. 
Love vanilla. And about four tablespoons of lemon zest because we're going for a really dynamic cake here. The last little product we're gonna add, and these are really great to know about. Right now in the market, there's some really great food colorings that are very holistic or natural and don't contain chemicals. This one, for example, is made with turmeric. There's people out there that are really allergic to food colorings. So these are really nice options. Okay, that should be good. Now you could do this in a traditional bun cake, you could do it as a layer cake, but just for fun and because I like doing individual platings, I have a really fun cake pan with some different shapes in it. Oops, <laughs> do not forget whatever you do to prep your cake pan. Even though it says nonstick, I don't always trust them. So I have a nice nonstick spray. Also organic, because it's great you can get those now. And it has some, a little bit of flour right in the mixture. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give those a good spray. Yes, one too many times I have forgotten to prep a cake pan. That's how you end up with a trifle. So we're just gonna ladle this in. Now I'm filling these up pretty full because this is a nice, dense, moist cake. And they are gonna puff up a little bit like cupcakes, but when we go to plate them, I'm gonna show you what to do about that. Okay, great. Mm. Clean off the cake pan. Lovely. And into a 340 degree oven. For about 30 to 35 minutes, or until a toothpick comes out clean. And coming up next, we're gonna make a beautiful vanilla lavender glaze to go on those cakes. And our cocktail of the day, a lavender lemon drop martini. Now to finish off our cakes with a lavender vanilla glaze and make our lemon drop martini. But first, let's see how those cakes look. Oh wow, these turned out really beautiful. Set them here to cool. And don't worry about the tops because we're gonna trim those off. Okay, now for our frosting. Now generally frostings can be really high in calories, so we're gonna make a really simple glaze to just kind of drizzle over these cakes. We're gonna start with soy margarine, once again, about two tablespoons. To that we are gonna add three cups of veganized powdered sugar. We're not gonna start with it all at once. We're gonna put about half in. To that, we're gonna add some soy milk gradually. Okay, now we're gonna add the rest of that powdered sugar. Okay, this is gonna be nice. Now to this, we're gonna add some lavender essence. Now this is kind of a hard product to find, but you can always go to our website at jensgitlessgourmet.com to look for links, or we have a fabulous recipe where you can make it from fresh lavender. Just a couple drops is enough. We're also gonna add, oh, about half a teaspoon of vanilla. Mmm. That tastes really good. Okay, these should come out really, really easy. So I'm just gonna kinda stick a fork in the middle and gently lift them out. Look how beautiful these are. Really fun and interesting shapes. Now before I plate them, I wanted them to kind of lie flat on my plates. So I'm just gonna trim off bottoms. I love these shapes, they're so beautiful. And they're petite, so they're a nice size. I'm gonna drizzle just a little bit of our glaze. And I have some beautiful fresh lavender here, which I'm gonna trim up just a little bit. I love using fresh flowers in presentation. And whereas lavender isn't one that you can really eat, you can also use fresh pansies, nasturtiums. There's a lot of edible flowers out there and we'll definitely be experimenting with those. And I'm gonna try a little piece that I have right here. 
Mm. <laughs> okay, that is really good. You're never gonna believe this is a low fat cake recipe. Now for our cocktail. You know, it's really fabulous that so many companies these days are starting to go organic, even your cocktail mixers. This is a fabulous one from Mod Mix, and it actually inspired my cake dessert tonight. It's a lemon lavender martini mix. So we're gonna take our shaker, add some ice. Okay, now we're gonna take one part vodka, and believe it or not, even it's organic. Two parts Mod Mix. But just for fun, I'm gonna muddle some fresh lemon. Give it a quick shake. And grab a couple of martini glasses. slices of lemon. Now this is a fabulous light summer meal, made even lighter with our smart ingredient choices. So cheers. Here's to a healthier planet and a healthier you. Mm.